Hello friends, welcome back. We are on the second video. We are going to be using the Posca markers again to detail up the cockpit, this time of a 172 scale F-16CJ. Chose this aircraft in particular because basically we'll be checking out how the white will lay on top of black. So we want to get that modern cockpit feel. Uh, using the raised detail. So it should be a good test of the Posca markers to see how they work over one another and also going to do a different paint. So let's just have a look quickly at the cockpit. Okay, so same as before, what I'm going to do is assemble some components of the cockpit, also the ejector seat and some other bits and pieces. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Okay, so here's the basic pieces. A lot less than the 109, check out the 109 video as well if you want to look at the World War II cockpit being detailed. But this time we are going to use, well the closest I could get to the cockpit colour is this one. We're going to try a semi-gloss paint and this time an aqueous paint from Mr. Hobby. So we need to again base paint our cock cockpit parts. The other test I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try to actually do a wheel and some other details. But let's get these base painted in the appropriate colors. And also I might do the pilot. Okay, with the parts now painted, let's just give them 30 minutes to cure before we apply the markers. Okay, so using the black 1MR tip, let's activate the pen by giving it a shake. And again, activating the nib. We'll start again with something easy. Let's do the control grips on the throttle and the joystick. Okay, now let's try and detail the black consoles inside the cockpit. Let's wait for that to dry. And now let's detail the main console of the aircraft. The black is our time to dry, which is nearly instantly. Now let's use the white marker to see if we can detail out the switches. Okay, there we are. Well, immediately we can see that the white is very strongly opaque against the black. It is a little bit difficult to do. You need to make sure that the tip is pretty clear of paint. 
or else you just flood the entire area. But in all honesty, not that bad a result considering we're just using pens. Let's see if we can just add a little tiny bit of detail onto this forward console. And we'll come back to this with a different color a little bit later on. Okay, now to use the paint marker, really like paint. Let's color in an entire area. In fact, we're gonna color in the area that's marked out as black on top of the cockpit. There's quite a large area here, but we'll try and be as precise as possible. Let's try and do that now. Okay, so one massive advantage with the black is the way that it dries matte and also the coverage is of course opaque even on this bare plastic. However, the disadvantage is that trying to get it into the very small recesses and details is very difficult because of the nib, it won't allow me access inside there. So I need to flood it with a little bit of the paint marker. However, it does self level and it does dry totally flat. This is an excellent tool for doing your sill detailing if they're flat black. Let's also use the paint marker to cover in the HUD console. Let's experiment at using the black and white paint markers to fully paint and detail these wheels. With the wheel, I found it a little bit too difficult to control the demarcation, and obviously a brush would be much better for this application. Because I'm unhappy with the finish of the wheel, let's remove all of the paint marker using some alcohol. Let's use the black paint marker again to detail this ejection seat. Again, I have the same problem with the nib not being able to reach inside the very deepest details. Let's use the gray marker to add some highlights. Finally, let's add the panel line accent color, the enamel wash from Tamiya, on top of the paint marker to tone down the effect. Let's try and detail the HUD using the black paint marker. Let's now airbrush the pilot figure with model air acrylic from Vallejo and see how the paint marker can detail afterwards, checking for any adverse effects on the paint.
The acrylic paint's been left to dry for only five minutes. Let's use the black paint marker to detail out the pilot. Let's apply a second coat to try and get in a more opaque white if possible. Finally, let's add details to the helmet using the grey. Finally, let's add the panel line accent colour to our depth to the pilot figure. Okay, so I assembled the cockpit, that's in place. This is the pilot in the ejector seat, added a flat coat and just a drop of gloss on the visor. I think it's okay, acceptable. Okay, one further thing to do. This MFD, it should have green screens. Can we add the green into the screens? Let's try that now. This should be a very good test for the market. As you can see, the nib is basically the same size as the CRT. Um, it's gonna be difficult to do, but let's try it. Well, it does appear the green totally opaquely covers the black. Let's just let that dry off and see how it looks. Okay, so I went in actually with the black and just sort of tied up the outside edge. Pretty accurate, looks pretty good, it does work. Okay, final thoughts on the F-16 172 scale cockpit. Again, um, I really enjoyed using them. I think uh, quite successful. What I found out though is that the coverage on top of bare plastic is um, less, it's less than um, applying it on top of the paint. When you apply it on top of the paint, the markers work a lot better. I really like the effect on top of the, the white on top of the black. Um, looks particularly effective. Question is guys, do you want to see me do a 148 scale cockpit uh, do, uh, using the same method? If so, write in the comments. If I get sufficient feedback, I'll do a 148 scale cockpit using the same method. If not, this is the last time uh, you'll see a full demo of this. Okay, one more video to do is armor, so we'll do that next.